Welcome to the Sizer online tutorial for the US edition. In this video, we will go through features related to lateral stability available in the software. So we will start off this video by discussing some design settings and we will focus on lateral stability for built-up members. If you click the settings in the menu screen, then navigate to the design tab you will see there is a section devoted to lateral stability factor CL. It is related to built up members on how well the individual plies are fastened together. By default, Sizer will assume that connections between plies of the built up beam are not adequate and perform the stability factor calculation based on a single ply. You will notice a big difference in the bending capacity depending on the option selected. In fact, let me show you. Here is a 10 feet long 4 ply 2x8 lumber built up beam consisting of number 1 number 2 SPF. If you were to calculate CL based on a single ply, the resulting CL would be 0.651 resulting in a bending design value of 787 psi. Now, if we select full member width, CL would be equal to 1.0 and the bending design value would be 1207 psi. When using the full member width, we meet the requirement of NDS clause 3.3.3.1, but when using the single ply width, a beam stability factor CL lower than 1 is applied. Information related to the lateral stability calculations will automatically be reported for you in the design results. Some research has shown that knurled and bolted beams can achieve at most 30% composite action in terms of resisting lateral torsional buckling, so it is recommended to use single ply width for lateral stability factor unless adhesives or other measures of connections are considered adequate to laminate the members together. If you are unsure about the adequacy of the connections, we suggest the conservative approach and select the single ply width setting. Inside the lateral stability factor design setting, there is also an option regarding the unsupported length LU used in the calculation of the CL factor. This setting is primarily intended for multi-span beams with moment reversals. By default, unsupported length LU ends at points of zero moment is not selected. This means that LU is calculated based on points of lateral support, typically taken as the length between points of bearing where lateral support is also specified. The software does give you the option of calculating LU based on points of zero moment by toggling the unsupported length LU for CL factor option. But this means that the LU is typically shorter and therefore less conservative than if LU is calculated based on the distance between lateral supports. This is why we suggest not selecting this. Just to be clear, LU is used to calculate the effective length LE, which is then used to calculate the slenderness ratio RB. This affects the resulting lateral stability factor CL for a beam. Let's look at an example to see how this last feature works. Looking at a two-span continuous beam that has two 10 feet segments with uniformly distributed dead and live loads and lateral support only provided at points of bearing. Because the beam is continuous over two spans, this creates a negative bending zone around the center support. In this case, if the unsupported length LU option is not toggled, for both positive and negative bending, the length LU will be taken as 10 feet or the distance between supports. Now, looking at the same example, but if we toggle the option of unsupported length LU, you will notice a difference in the LU for positive and negative bending. In the case of the positive bending, the unsupported length LU is taken as the distance between the end support and the point of zero moment along the length of the first span, so about 7.5 feet in this case. Then, for negative bending, the length LU is taken as the distance between zero moments, so in this case it would be 5 feet. When designing a bending member in beam mode, depending on the material type you specify, the lateral supporting conditions are going to change automatically. If you specify the material type as a beam, the default setting of the program is to assume lateral support at the top and bottom of the beam at points of support. 
If you specify your floor joist or roof joist, since sheathing is fastened to the top of the member creating a system effect and providing lateral support, the default is to provide continuous lateral support along the top and lateral support at the bottom at only the points of bearing supports. You can always specify exact lateral support spacing details. For instance, if there is a beam supporting a floor joist system spaced at 16 inch on center, you may want to specify an exact support spacing on the top of the beam as it will affect the calculations of CL. When designing a beam with multiple spans, the option to toggle laterally supported at support becomes available. This option is for interior supports and gives you the choice for designing certain supports as laterally restrained or unrestrained. This will have an effect on the lateral stability factor since depending on whether or not this option is checked, the span used to determine the unsupported length LU, the effective length LE, and therefore the slenderness ratio RB will not be the same. Ultimately, the bending capacity of the beam will vary depending on this option. Note that it is possible to manually adjust the lateral support spacing at the top and bottom of the member. We will further discuss this feature later within the column mode. Using our original 4-ply 2x8 SPF built-up beam with an additional 10 feet span, therefore 20 feet total design span, we will run the design with 100 PLF dead load and 135 PLF live load applied to the beam. You can notice the difference in the bending moment capacity. In fact, in this case, the beam can resist almost twice the moment when laterally supported at the middle support. For the case where lateral support is not provided in the middle, the member fails. By looking at the additional data, we can trace back the detailed calculation for the stability factor CL. By looking at the calculations for the lateral stability, we can see that the unsupported length LU is twice as long when it's not laterally supported. This also generates an effective length that is twice as long, as well as a higher slenderness ratio RB, which is used to determine the lateral stability factor CL.